everyone. My name is Sabrina. I am your instructor for this evening. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm going to be teaching you how to paint our lovely uh, city of Colorado and a little bit of uh, the beautiful backdrop that makes it so special to us. Um, so um, I'm going to start by introducing you to our materials for tonight. Um, you may or may not have received or picked up a uh, kit from the studio. Um, we are uh, selling kits for, I think, about $15 um, and children's kits for um, additional videos that we have also been put, will be putting up on the YouTube channel. Um, but if you uh, receive the kit to teach tonight, or to paint with us tonight, then you uh, probably received these three brushes. Um, some colors, probably these cut colors, since these are the ones we're using, I certainly hope you have them. Um, if not, we'll be having very creative color of flags. Um, which is exactly what we love as the being painting. So if you feel like you want to change colors, do it. Go for it. Um, but in the meantime, and I wanted to let you know that if you uh, are painting with us and you got a kit, you probably didn't receive something to put your water in. I use, uh, I like to use two uh, glasses um, because it helps me to, um, to differentiate between um, the lighter colors and the darker colors when I am um, washing off my brushes. So um, make sure you have something to wash your brushes in, um, so a glass of water. Um, and something else that doesn't come with our kit is something to drink, um, which sipping and painting hands in is, of course, very important part of our whole uh, culture is a little bit of drinking to make things flow a little easier. Um, I personally will be drinking water tonight, but if you can drink wine, go for it. It's a lot of fun, I've heard. <laughs> And um, I always suggest getting a good snack because at the at the studio we find that that's a really uh, lovely part of uh, our experience. So get yourself a snack, maybe something with chocolate in it. I'm always a proponent of chocolate. Um, and then I'm going to introduce you to uh, your old friends who may help you out tonight. So um, I hope you're all settled. And if you're not, um, you know, take your time. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to our brushes. The, the big brush um, is going to be your biggest brush. The medium brush is going to be the medium brush. And the small brush will be your small brush. Uh, uh, and so tonight, you're going to be painting with those three brushes and this palette of colors. Now, I have uh, taken the liberty of putting my colors on a paper plate, which will actually be very helpful for tonight. So if you have access to a paper plate, I suggest using one of those um, and keeping an extra one because we at Sipping and Painting Hampton have found that paper plates are very useful for this painting. Um, your size of your paper plate may be different, but when I get to that step, I'll explain it. And if you have something that fits better, then use that. Um, so tonight, you're going to need white. Um, you're going to need some yellow, some red, some um, dark blue, and some black. Just a little bit of black goes a long way. So I tend to use just very little bit. And then remember that when you're pouring your colors out, you can always get more, um, which is really lucky for us. So, oh, and um, my assistant Thea is very cognizant, <laughs> getting a lot of help. Uh, Thea also teaches classes, so she knows the script very well. Uh, you should also have something to um, wipe your brushes on. We are using a rag tonight, an old t-shirt or something like that. Um, at the studio, we like to use uh, paper towels, so if you want to go for that, you can use that instead. Um, but make sure you have something to wipe on that's not, you know, your clothes, your neighbor, something like that. Um, we found that uh, paint on your neighbor doesn't go very well. Uh, if you do get paint on your neighbor or your clothes, um, there are some suggestions that we have for dealing with that. First of all, deal with it immediately. Um, if you're using acrylic paint, which is what you should have gotten in the kit, then you'll find that um, washing out with water immediately will probably go a long way, but it's not a little bit of alcohol uh, will really help. And additionally, to solve this problem before it happens, like masks, we always suggest wearing an apron. Preventative measures are very, very useful. Um, so if you have something that can work as an apron, some paint clothes, go ahead and put those on. Um, all right, so uh, what do you say we get started? 
So first of all, I'm going to take my smallest brush. It's a really thin little one. You can see it looks like that. Um, I'm going to dip it in water. I always start by dipping my brushes in water unless I'm doing a dry brush technique, which we don't have on this painting. So dip it in water. Um, and then on your palette, we're going to go for a little bit of that dark blue. Now, I am going to mix it with just the teensiest, teensiest, tiniest bit of black. Um, and then as we go, I'll probably be mixing it with a little bit more black to get the exact color that I want. But for now, just a teensy bit of black. If you don't want to go for black just yet, don't worry, you don't have to. Um, so we're going to start by outlining the mountains. Now, if you feel that uh, you want mountains that are very specific to Colorado, you're feel free to look up a reference photo. For me, this is my reference photo. Um, when I'm doing art, I find that the best way to go about creating new pieces is to look up a reference of what I want to do. Uh, so there are plenty of beautiful pictures of Denver. You might want to take a look at those and see if it helps you. Um, for now, I'm just going to do some uh, mountains that I like. So the first step in this painting is I'm starting. Um, we are splitting because of the nature of the Colorado flag, which is actually one of the most beautiful flags in the country, um, as my brother, who's interested in festivology, will discuss with me. Um, it's split into three really simple parts for us. So um, if it helps you to begin with this idea, um, I'm, I put a mark here, and I can put a mark here. And I know now that the uh, flag and on the canvas is split into three separate parts. And when I am painting this background in, I will know generally where I want to start those three separate parts and where I want them to end. So if that helps you, think about how they, the lines will connect across your canvas. It's not quite straight. It's a month after all. So, um, I'm going to take that line from my canvas, and at this first third, I'm going to go, and I'm honestly really lightly using a uh, sort of sketching style with my uh, little thin brush, um, with a mixture of black and blue, and I'm creating some mountains, just mountains, that I think are pretty. If you want to follow the sample that you will find on the screen, um, on as her persona. If you want to use those instead, uh, as that instead, which is, um, then go ahead and trace those as exactly as you want to, or you can uh, improv and do it however you'd like. It's up to you. So I created these mountains and I decided that it does enough for me, so I'm going to change the shape of them a little bit and lean it off down a little bit more so that the shape of the mountain um, works a little better for me. Something natural. I always like to include a little bit of asymmetry in the way that I illustrate them because in nature, asymmetry is actually what makes our perception of natural things natural. Um, the world is not nearly as symmetrical, so I like to, to make sure that my composition is a little asymmetrical, which means that this side doesn't look exactly like this side. So if yours isn't looking exactly symmetrical, that's a good thing. You should be proud of that. So I have a really rough outline here of what I think the mountains are going to look like at their peak. Um, if you want to go down a little bit, now I'm thinking maybe I've got a little bit uh, too much to go down a little bit more. Feel free to correct that at any point in time. It's giving us a really good guideline of um, not to put um, the sky as we go into our next step in a minute. Um, so, if you want to go for it. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I'm going to bring this down a bit next to my dot that I. Um, so, if you're using those those little lines, make sure that you are uh, connecting 
uh, all the way across the canvas. Okay, then we go on to our next step. Um, like I said, you can change the style of your mountains at any time. Um, so don't see if you don't need exactly how you want to. Um, putting brushes here from my small brush to my medium sized brush. So for a large brush, you can do that too. Um, I'm going to uh, put some water on my brush the same way that I did with my small brush. And I'm going to be using the same colors that I was using to make this blue and just a teensy bit of black. One thing I want to tell you about black is that a little bit of black goes a long way. So don't be concerned about adding um, um, too little of it. Be concerned about adding too much of it. I'm using blue and black here. And I'm going from the top of my canvas. I like to start at the corners personally and work my way down. But with this, uh, with this, uh, we're going to use a little bit of stylization. You don't have to, but I like to use a little bit of stylization in the technique that I'm using to paint my sky. I'm going to go for really, uh, I'm going to intermix that black and blue uh, color with my, just my dark blue. So this is my black and blue color, as you can much darker. So I'm keeping it at the top of my canvas. Um, and I can go long and straight. Now, if you're having big, of white peeking through, all you need to do is add more water or add more paint. I find that adding a little bit more water at the meat, and if that's not enough, add more paint to your brush and see if that works. Now, when I am doing a painting like this, uh, I always go around the edges of my canvas. If you have a canvas like this, I would suggest going directly over those edges because since you've been painting, we have found that if you if you cover your edges, you don't have to buy a frame, which takes months out of the whole painting thing. Um, and you can just keep it in your house without issue, which is really nice. Um, additionally, if you start with those edges, you can put that paint directly from the edge over the edge of the canvas, and it looks super smooth. Now, I'm running out of a little bit of water, so I'm going to put a little bit more water on my brush, and I'm going to tap it to make sure that it's not too much water. A little bit more paint and come in from that edge again that I just painted over. I'm putting those lines really straight over across my canvas, being sure not to go over this line that we made. I'm going over only the line that I decided wasn't going to work for me. Um, and then I'm matching it up to the line of the mountain that I created at the beginning of our, of our lesson. Again, I'm using straight strokes with my medium-sized brush. Um, if you are having trouble covering a bit of your line, like I am here, I'm going to go over it with a thick layer of paint, let it dry, and come back and cover it again later when it's dry. Just like I did on my side edge here, I'm going to bring the same technique, the same technique to the top of my painting um, and bring those lines directly over the edge of the canvas. So, as you can see here, this is the top of my edge of my canvas. There are bits of white, and I want to solve that so that I don't have to put a frame on it uh, later on, because as most people are, probably a little tight on money. Right? You don't want to go and draw the frame. If you do, that's fine, but right, right now I suggest you have the canvas using this really handy dandy trick and going over the edges of your canvas with the paint so that you have a wrap around what we call a gallery wrap. And I'm going to go over these edges too. And that will help me as I go full paint directly from the edge of the canvas onto the face of the canvas. So there we go. As you can see, I can pull that color directly from the edge of my canvas 
just onto the face of my canvas, and I'm intermixing just pure blue, just this pure blue, with a little bit of black and blue. That combination and the pure blue is creating this sky. So right now I'm taking just pure blue, I'm um, putting water on my brush to make it flow. Um, I'm pulling that in from the edge of my painting, um, and that pure blue that you got in your in your uh, in your kit should be um, just the right color for our beautiful Colorado sky. Um, it's one of the, my favorite things about Colorado, actually. I am a art student, um, a costume designer in New York at a New York school. Not right now, but um, I, I have actually been spending most of my time in New York. And what I found is that at lower elevations, you don't have, to have so much sky. And the sky here in, in Denver, Colorado, is one of the most glorious open ones that I know of. So I hope you, you are giving it its full value using that beautiful uh, pure blue and intermixing it at the edges with a little bit of black. At the bottom, closer to the mountains, mountains I'm just using that pure blue to give the effect that the sky opens up into a dark night sky as we get closer to the edges of the canvas. So at the bottom here is pure blue, and then at the edges around here, I'm going to use that black and blue. So here we go with our our, our pure blue right around the, the outline of mountains. Now, if you're having trouble around the outline of these mountains that we did, feel free to switch brushes um, and paint out a little bit more from the edges of your mountains so that you don't go over the outline. I find that to be really helpful. And I'm just keeping these brush strokes as flat and straight as possible, all the way across the length of the canvas. And that texture is going to help us create the texture of the flag. I'm still using that light blue here at the, or that. Uh, pure blue at the, at the bottom near the mountain. It's not actually that light. If you want to do light blue, um, then I would suggest mixing a little bit of white in with your with your blue, but that's a personal choice. If you want a, a, a baby blue sky, you're more than welcome to try that. Now, this is the first layer, and I'm, I'm definitely going to go over again um, with another layer of paint because you can see there are some places where it looks a little bit strange. And in those places, the most important thing is we let it dry and come back with more paint later. So on that note, I'm going to take a break, let it dry, and tell you a little bit about some of the things that ha are happening in our studio. So Sipping and Painting Hampton, the studio itself, is currently closed. We are hoping to be open for some classes in July, starting up very soon. Uh, however, um, in the meantime, the studio is open and they're um, for retail hours only um, from about 12 to 3. The hours exactly are going to be on the calendar each day, um, right before you sign up for a class. So if you want to check out that calendar, you can find out the retail hours that we are open. Um, and during those retail hours, there are a few things that you can find in the store. First of all, these kits with our canvas uh, brushes and a few other and a few paints um, are what you'll find in the store, along with some kids kits for some of our other um, virtual uh, classes. Virtual, um, we're doing virtual kids classes, which are going to be 30 minute videos approximately. Um, teaching kids really easy, fun, colorful paintings. And each painting kit will come with a pre-drawn design that you will then be able to learn how to paint with our online videos on our YouTube channel. And I got to tell you a secret, my mom called me up when I was being evacuated from school and told me, I need to be YouTube famous. So we need your help to watch those videos and make, the, make my uh, assistant here, Fia, YouTube famous. famous. You'll find those videos on our YouTube channel, which is connected at the bottom of our website page. Um, and we hope that you'll enjoy them. He and I will actually be making quite a few of them, so it'll be familiar faces for you guys. Um, other things that we're selling during retail hours 
are met. They tend to be a big fashion uh, thing going on right now. So if you want to be fashionable, fashionable and also support your local sipping and painting Hampton business, um, we welcome you to get these uh, wonderful masks. They're only $3 um, and are being sold in uh, during retail hours. Additionally, we have these beautiful hand-painted masks um, in a sort of Monet style. These masks, I'm pretty sure, are $7 um, and also are being sold during retail hours. They're really pretty tie-dye. And I think there's also kits available if you want to make your own. So feel free to stop by the uh, the studio and check out some of those awesome things that we're selling. Alrighty. You, you got to um, for yourself to see if uh, your painting is dry and going in with a hand and touching it. Um, so that will tell you if it's dry or not. Um, there are some other suggestions we have for you. For example, you can pick it up and wipe it on your neighbor. And if they yell at you, you'll know that it's definitely not dry. Otherwise, you can um, look at it from an angle and see if there's still a sheen on the paint. If there is a sheen on the paint, then it is not dry. Um, so if you're waiting for paint to dry, which is something that we find ourselves having to do quite a bit at the Bingham Painting Hampton, I suggest you take um, a break and you know eat a little bit of your snack, drink a little, a little bit of your wine or whatever other drink you have. Um, sit back and enjoy yourself. How are you all doing with uh, your painting tonight so far? Are we feeling like this is a good paint? Um, if you have any responses or questions, you can either, during class, unmute yourself. Um, you've all been muted um, automatically, but if you want, you have control over your microphone, so you can unmute yourself at any time to ask a question or respond to a question. Or you can also text my assistant, Thea, in the group chat. The chat, if you if you text the group chat, uh, she'll be able to respond to any questions that you have. She is also a professionally trained artist. In fact, she is the professionally trained artist that trained me. Uh, so if you have any questions, I would absolutely ask her. Um, but if you want to try and mic and ask me, you can do that too. I'm going to move on a little bit. And I'm going to go over a second layer of paint on the top of my canvas. I'm mixing that, that pure blue with a little bit of black, and that little bit of black I'm going to pull in from the edges of my canvas and darken the sky just at the top of it so that it looks like our blue is fading into a night sky. Again, I'm keeping those brush strokes with my medium brush very straight um, along the grain of the canvas. And when I find myself having um, little spots in my paint, I add a little bit more paint to my brush, or sometimes I find that adding um, a little bit more water is more helpful. So if you need to add more water, go for that. If you need to add more paint, try that too. One, one or the other will probably help you out. All right, so I'm going to take my second Now I like to make sure I'm going to clean up, I'm going to spend a little bit of time cleaning up the bits of my outline uh, that I made earlier that have become a little bit odd as I painted in my sky layer. So if you need to go over the shape of your outline, go ahead and do that. You can do that with the medium sized brush on edge, or you can do it with your thin, tiny little brush, it's up to you. Um, or if you're really confident in the way it looks, don't worry about it at all. Something that we love about um, the way that we teach classes here at Sipping and Painting is that whether you walk in the door as a beginner or as an expert, the virtual door in this case, um, we welcome everyone and everyone's talents and abilities um, are 
equally enjoyed. So if you find that your painting doesn't look exactly like mine, don't worry about it at all. That's honestly a favorite thing about all of the instructors at Sipping and Painting. We love seeing the unique pieces that come out of our, our many, many different artists. You all have amazing unique abilities. And if you've never worked on a painting or this is one of your uh, few times that you have, I'm very excited that you're putting yourself out of your fun funny tonight, especially to work on a really fun one like this. All right, I hope you're all feeling pretty good with the top of your painting. Uh, I'm going to move on to our next step. And as I find myself not fixing things, which is probably the hardest thing to do as an artist, stop fixing your own work. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to put, I put my brush in water, I always do that. Um, and I'm going to go in with my thin brush. But you can use a medium-sized brush if that, if that works better for you. And I'm going to take a, a little bit of white and just the teensiest, tiny, tiniest bit of black. And I'm making this really light gray. And it, it's up to you how light a gray you want. I wouldn't suggest doing a really deep, dark gray because it'll be more difficult um, to get rid of it if it gets too dark. So I always start out with just the teensiest bit of black. And I can always go back and add more black later but you can't take black out, that's much more difficult. So I'm gonna take that gray that I have on my brush and I'm going to, um, I'm going to be doing this as, um, I'm going to create one side of the mountain. So when you look at the mountain, there are often shadows creating the shape of the mountain, so they're 3D, right? So right now we've got a really uh, 2D shape right now. We have the 2D plane that is this white area and the 2D plane that is our sky. And those, uh, those uh, pieces of our painting are really pretty, but they uh, don't look like mountains yet. So what, in order to make them look like real 3D mountains, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of gray and I'm going to use it as a highlight. So I'm going to keep all of my gray on this side of my mountain. And that, by shading it on this side of my mountain, the shading will create a 3D style that will um, make the mountains look like they are um, like really coming out of your painting. So as you can see, I, I'm still letting my brush be really loose and I'm just pulling that gray down and out of this uh, line that I created down the center of my mountain. Um, and I'm pulling that gray to the right side of my mountain um, to create a sort of shadow that makes it look 3D. Now you can have this this highlight or this uh, shadow go all the way to the edge of your mouth. Um, I like to use it to create a little outline um, sometimes, but if you like it to just go from the center and not go all the way, that's a you. So that's my shadow. And I'm going to continue with this style, again, keeping it very loose and natural. And I'm going to create some more peaks um, down the line of mountains on my painting. Now the brush stroke that I'm using right now is I'm, I'm using just the edge or tip of my, uh, my little thin brush. And just that tip, I'm making a strange little uh, crooked line because it's, again, asymmetry is what the human eye perceives as more natural than symmetry. So if you make it a little crooked, a little strange, uh, that line will look more like a real mountain, uh, to, mountain range to you than a straight line. So I'm making that thin little wavy line and I'm pulling the gray out in just tiny little flicks um, to the side of my, to the right side of my uh, mountain line. Now I suggest using the same side. So for me, it's the right side. If you want to do the left side, go for it. Um, my brother's left-handed, so he does everything a little differently. If you want to do it that way, go for it. But um, I'm using the right side, and I'm pulling those flicks directly out of that line and down the side of my mountain. So I create a shadow that makes it look 3D. I'm going to pull this line. This is, um, again, using really thin asymmet asymmetrical line and I'm going to pull it down a little bit more than my other one 
um, as we're getting closer to the center of our, our mountain range. I'm flicking that gray out to create a shadow. And letting it create that 3D shape with just a little bit of gray. It's so incredible that we can it's transform the 2D plane into a 3D one with just a little bit of gray. Now I am mixing my gray directly on my palette. At some points of painting, I mix my colors on my canvas like I did a little earlier with our blue sky um, to create a, the sort of style that I wanted. But in this case, I'm, create, I'm, I'm mixing my colors directly on my palette. Um, so that I know what color it is before I put it on my, my painting. So I'm using that edge of my brush and creating a wiggly wiggly line. Um, this one I'm leaving a little further up and pulling those that gray out in little flicks. I'm using it to smooth out that edge a little bit, create that mountain edge a little bit more up here, and then allowing it to change shape down here a little bit. Now, I always like to remember to make my mountains a little funny shape because real mountains aren't quite so steep as um, we like to think. Um, since you probably live in Colorado, most of you have probably seen our mountains and they're, they, while they appear very, very large, they are not quite so steep. And so I find that in order to make real natural mountains, um, creating these funny little shapes really helps to uh, bring some reality to them. So I like to make them a little bit bumpy, a little bit strange. Sometimes a little bit squat. You can put a point right at the tip, uh, or you can you can not, it's up to you. There we go, what do we think about our mountain range? Now, um, if you want to go forth and add another layer, I would suggest maybe making a darker gray and using it to just outline those lines so a little bit like this. Um, but it's up to you if you want to do a further step like that. Um, I kind of like the effect that it creates uh, by taking that the edge of my brush, that little tip of my brush, and using a slightly darker gray and just going a little bit and making that ridge a little bit more defined. That's up to you. Now, um, as your instructor today, I just wanted to let you know that the three classes that we're teaching here um, um, for sipping and painting are free, um, and we are also uh, doing them for free. So um, I have put my Venmo up in the corner. Um, it's also one of the squares that you'll find on the screen. If you, uh, or I think it's also been dropped in the chat by my assistant Sia. So if you uh, feel that um, you're benefiting from my instruction, which I get, deeply hope that you are, um, or uh, it, feel free uh, to show your kindness and generosity through Venmo. We'd really deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. Now I'm still, I'm going along with that darker gray and uh, putting that ridge line a little bit darker on my painting because I, I like the effect that it gives. Um, I'm being very, very, very light with my brush. Um, and by not pressing hard, I'm allowing just a tiny, tiny bit of paint to, uh, to touch the canvas. So I'm able to control it really easily, which helps me. Alrighty. I hope you're as happy with your mountains as I am uh, with mine. If you're not and you're having a little bit of trouble, 
feel free to ask a question in the in the chat. Um, Thea and I would be more than ha happy to help you out and answer to you. Um, but on that note, uh, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, well let's see. I'm gonna take a break and maybe sip on my uh, drink if you want to. Drink. Uh, my paint dry for a little and while we are letting our paint dry and taking some sips of wine, um, I would like to ask you if anyone's celebrating something tonight. If we have any birthdays, anniversaries, um, father, late Father's Day things going on. If you're celebrating something, either unmute yourself or put it in the group chat. Let us know and we'll do a toast. Alrighty, if we don't if we don't have any specific celebrations, I'd like to do a little toast of my own. Because for instance, I think that this is the most important toast of all. So I'm going to give a toast. I hope you all join me to good health and happiness for all. Alrighty, I hope you're all at a time. If you're feeling a little bit behind, don't worry. I need you to slow down a little bit. Feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and and let me know if you need me to, to take a break. Um, first though, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to. Hold on, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> As often does happen. But, oh, that's right. So, so what I'm doing right now is I'm turning my canvas upside down. This gives me a new view because we're going to uh, start a little bit of our of our uh, bottom stripe. Um, right. uh, I I find this helpful, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, you can do it a little differently than me, and it will not, um, it won't change anything. Uh, I find it helpful though, so I'm going to take a um, brush, and I'm going to go in with that same blue. I'm using more pure blue um, to start with than my, uh, than my darker blue. Um, and I'm going to start at the bottom of my painting again. And the same way that I did my the top of my canvas, I'm going to uh, put I put my marks on at the beginning. There's my mark, and here's my mark. Those are my my one third mark. Um, if it's not quite right, don't worry about it. We're painting from the bottom up, so if that mark is wrong, when we as we get closer, you'll notice. And I'm not going to paint fully up yet, so make sure you're starting from the and. I flipped my canvas, so if you missed that, right now it looks like the top is actually the bottom. <laughs> I'm using that pure blue, um, and I'm going to go into my canvas on the top edge. Well, I'm going around the on the edge of my canvas, um, and I'm gonna now. I'm going to I'm going to mix a little bit of blue and black again, so that I can lead the black and blue color in um, from the canvas. And I'm just going along the top of it, 
And I'm covering the, the edges of my canvas, like I said before, so that I have a frame, so that um, when, you're, when your family or, or whoever comes and visits uh, uh, will see it, they'll see that all the edges and corners are covered. Here, the person on the chat wants a little bit of a catch-up. They're still on the mountain chat. All right, you folks, I'll be right All right, I hope that um, that little break helps you take some time to catch up. Um, if you're still behind, don't worry. I'm still using that medium sized brush, and I'm using that pure blue and a little bit of black, I'm mixing them together on my palette. And then I'm going to just cover just a, an inch of my bottom edge, really, just a few, an inch or two of my bottom edge, and make a stripe. And again, using that, uh, that straight across movement to create a texture uh, that's really uh, the, the really straight texture of brush strokes. Um, if you find it easier, you can turn your canvas upside down. I first do that, but in this case, I'm going to do it this way uh, to help some of you know where I'm painting. Again, I went around the edges of my canvas with uh, that blue and black mix before I started at the bottom of my canvas. So as you can see, the edges of my canvas are a little bit blue here, and a little bit of blue there, and a little bit of blue there. And that's going to bring that color in from the edges. Um, and also, when I put it up in my house, then I'll be able to, uh, to, to do it without a frame. But actually, this painting, is not going up in my house, it could go up in your house. So if you if you really like my painting and you want to claim it for your own, luckily for you, you have the opportunity to because during our special retail hours from uh, about tw uh, noon to three, we are selling all of our artists' originals. Uh, so if you want to drop by and pick up uh, one of the paintings that we do during class, they are all for sale on the back table and we'd love for you to have a chance to have them. Uh, additionally, uh, oh, there we go. Additionally, um, we are doing all of these paintings. Um, all of our, all every night, our instructor is different. So if you find that somebody, if you want to try a different instructor's style of teaching, every night we have somebody um, different on who can help you uh, learn a little bit of a different technique. Now, I'm, every time that I see this sort of effect happening, where it gets a little messy at the end of my brush stroke, I add a little bit of water and then go back for a little bit of paint, um, making sure to mix on my palette. And I'm pulling those, those lines directly from the edge of my canvas that I painted in. And I'm only going to go up a, a few inches. I'm not even going up the full third, because we want to uh, leave room to make our city skyline.
So I've gone up two, three inches, um, really not that far. I'm keeping this very uh, straight stroke across. And uh, and this is going to help us. This is at the bottom of the painting, so you'll see right where the city skyline is. Alrighty, so I am making sure to wet, wash my brush in the water. I'm keeping my my darker uh, paint separate from my lighter paints in my water jars um, because that helps to make sure that the um, color comes off your your brush a little bit more easy. Uh, make sure that if you're using lighter colors, uh, you don't end up with darker colors on it later. Um, while we're talking about washing brushes, I'd like to let you guys know some tricks about washing your brushes at home since we can't do it for you, which really makes us deeply sad because we love to clean things at the studio. We love to clean up your places after you leave and make sure that uh, your brushes are clean, but we can't do that for you tonight, unfortunately. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to wash your brushes. So this is uh, this brush, um, once I use it, um, I'm going to finish my, I, I'm whenever I'm painting, I always put my brush in the water while I'm painting because acrylic specifically will dry hard on your brushes and you don't want to do that. Um, so I always leave my brush in water and when, I, when I'm not using it. And so when you're done with your brushes, you're going to want to make sure to take them out of the water um, immediately when you're done with your painting and wash them because uh, they will, they, the glue will break down if you leave it in water overnight. So, um, when I'm done with my painting, I'm going, to, I'm going to put just a dollop of soap in my hand. Some dish soap works really nicely. Um, so I put about a dime size of dish in my hand. I'm going to take my brushes and I'm going to spin them around in my hand, which feels really, really good, honestly. So, um, painting is really great for many reasons. Um, and I, I like to, Spin them around, pick up in a little bit of water, uh, and and just make sure that it's clean. Once your water runs one runs clear, you'll know that all the color is off. You're gonna want to make sure that you got all of the the bottom edge of your um, paintbrush. Uh, if you jam your paintbrush into paint, you're gonna um, have a little bit of uh, paint at the at the top of it. So we're going to try to avoid that. Um, and get that in. So a little bit of soap and water and then let it dry. Uh, and I like to put a paper towel under them. Um, if you put them flat, that's the best way for them to dry. I hope that helps. I'm going to go back to my instructions. Uh, um, and um, this step is where I would suggest having a paper plate handy. Um, because we are not at the studio, I'm not sure if you have the same size paper plate as I do, or plate at all. Um, so if you don't, um, and you're freehanding this, um, then I wish you the best of luck. And uh, if you want to find something around your house that works um, like a perfect circle additionally, that um, take the time to go and do that. that that's a great idea. So, I like a paper plate. This is actually the same one I'm using for my palette. Um, not the exact same one, but one of them. Uh, um, and one thing I'm going to find on my uh, canvas is that, uh, that red circle to go. And the, as, I, as I'm doing this, is um, I'm placing this red circle, which is our uh, feet, to the side of my canvas. Um, because the the composition, as you can see, is asymmetrical. 
um, where the flag is not. Um, but I'm putting the this sort of sea and sun in, into the, the onto the edge of my painting right here. Um, and I'm placing it uh, where I think it looks good. Uh, since I can't, can't see your painting, just do the same wherever you think it looks good. Probably looks good. Um, so I'm going to hold that there, and I'm going to take my uh, thin little brush. Um, and what we normally do at the studio is uh, for you. Um, I can't do that for you tonight, so I'm just going to show you where to start. So I have, have taken my thin little brush and I've covered it with a little bit of red paint. Just pure red um, works fine for this step, um, and I'll talk more on that later. So what I'm going to do now see on this, there is a, is a break in the circle to make it a C. Um, and so I'm going to start by finding where I think that that should be. I'm sitting in painting Hampton in our studio. We normally have these pre-marks for you. Um, I'm sure you can't do that for you tonight. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to find, I'm going to make a mark there. And I'm just going to count uh, one, two, three inches down this on, uh, on my plate. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to put another mark down here. Um, so once I've made those marks, um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to go around uh, the edge of this of the plate. Uh, so those marks, holding the plate right there. There you go. So you can see that I made those marks about three inches apart. Um, holding that plate in place. <coughs> I'm going to take that on my thin little brush, just pure red. And I'm going to outline the plate. I am honestly putting my, my way on the way off because I find that that gives me, if you need to add more paint or more water to make that line a little easier to do, feel free to try that. Um, I'm letting that line go all the way around the circle of my plate. And that'll give because surface, as we know, uh, the sticks are a little hard to, to do uh, perfectly, which is why I love doing things because then you don't have to worry about getting it just right. But in this case, I suggest using the plate um, to help you as a guide for this, this step. Try to keep that out the, uh, straight on the edge so that it looks be on the flag. I'm going all from point to point and not, I'm going to repeat this, I am not covering that three inches of between the mark and you won't have the half circle that creates the C or the, the be used to create the C of the, of the uh, car. I'm going all the way around the circle until I get um, to my other point. I'm not marking between those two points at all. So. Again, I'm keeping my brush halfway off the plate. I'm using the small brush because it's giving me the most control. I'm working my way up to that that edge or that without um, into that three inch area. And I'm trying to outline as uh, straight on the edge as I, as I can because um, it'll make it look really clean like the flag. So, if you you'll see that that is what I'm left with. Now, if yours is a little strange like me, doesn't look like it's not perfect, that's okay. Um, that's something that you can uh, fix later. 
Um, it's up to you. Now what I'm doing now is I just did diagonal lines uh, in to make it look like the looking at our reference or looking at the Colorado flag um, to help you with this step and this comes directly from me. Um, and if you need a straight guide, like some, some sort of just paper step, that is a great idea. I fully suggest taking um, advantage of it. Um, and there we go, I have two diagonal lines. If you're scared of this step, don't worry, we'll get to it later. You can do it uh, a little differently if you want. Um, so what you can also do it is take, um, I like to take a guide, this time I'm using uh, a different circle, and I'm going to place this on the inside directly or as close to as in the center as I can with this other uh, line that we drew. And I'm actually going to, uh, I can, you can use either the red or yellow. Um, I'm going to use the red, but I have to be very, very careful not to go uh, between the lines here. That's why I put my lines. Here. So I'm taking directly from this edge. Uh, that I did, and I'm going all the way around that. I'm using the red, and I'm making sure not to go between those lines, those diagonal lines that I did from our, our two marks that we didn't pass. Um, go past those marks again as you're going around the circle. Um, and, uh, and if you're, I'm going to show you in a minute, if you want to do it differently, then um, if the red is scaring you, feel free to put down your brush, wait a minute, let's try. Um, and I'm going to show you a different way to do it in a minute. Um, so again, I'm using a little guide because that really helps me. Um, but if that is not something you have available, if you're freehanding it, this is a great way to do it. Um, I'm again using my thin little brush um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our yellow, and I'm going to take that yellow um, and mix it with it, just a little bit of white. The reason that I'm mixing it with white is because these pigments are not as strong. The reds and the yellows, and even the blues, are not as strong um, in these acrylics without white. So a lot of the times I mix them with white to strengthen that color. Um, as you can see, it makes it a little bit lighter, but not a lot, um, but it, it'll show up better on your canvas. Um, so I'm gonna, I mixed a little bit of white and yellow together. And if you're freehanding this, I'm going to start from the center of that circle and find my way out. For freehanding this um, yellow, I'm going to take that, that yellow and spiral out until I get to the size of, of the inside of that, that yellow sun spot that we have. I'm going to spiral my way out into a circle. So if you're pretending, that's a great way to do it. Again, I mix my, my white and my yellow together um, so that the consistency of the color is a little bit stronger. Um, and I'm, I'm spiraling my way out um, to the edge of that, of what would be the in interior of the red seat. The best thing you can do really is just try and make sure that the edges of this line are as round and circular as you can get them. Uh, if it helps you, another way to do this is to mark with pencil on your canvas before you start and uh, create a guide that way and then go over it, which I should have mentioned earlier. I hope that if you would prefer to do that, you. Uh, have the opportunity now, um, even if you saw my other steps. Um, um, but you can try the, it. Um, if you didn't get a chance and you don't like the way that it turned out, just make sure it's dry, um, and then you can go over with some white and start over, which is a really nice thing about, about working with the light yellow and even the red. You can kind of go over with some white paint when it dries. So just if you don't like the shape of it, and you can correct it with some white paint later. Okay. 
Now, again, the way that I did this is on the interior, I took a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And they got spiraling out from the center of um, this, this C um, until I get a circle. Now, the yellow can um, is over as opposed to the C uh, that we have. So, um, where I can't fill this area in with uh, any um, uh, color, I can make sure that the interior of it, of the C, this yellow, um, gets right up to as you can see I'm doing now. You can also look at the reference to see how the how the C is out. So again, I've spiraled this out, um, and that spiral creates a beautiful color paint um, that I also really like. So uh, I suggest doing it this way. Um, even if you did a did the outline with a with a assistant or helper or a little tool um, or guide, um, I still suggest spiraling the you know, uh, uh, paintbrush um, out from the center of your your uh, yellow until you get a really pretty uh, circle. Now I think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the study of flag is something called vexillology. Um, that's your little fun fact for today. And I'm pretty sure, um, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing some, some things that my brother said because he's uh, very interested in the study of flags, uh, that the Colorado flag, um, yellow, so make sure that your sun is nice yellow. And I'm just going around the outline a little bit more and cleaning up some edges here that I didn't like so much. Um, feel free to do any fixing up that you need to. This is a very hard step. So don't worry, take your time um, and allow yourself to um, um, clean up some mistakes and let them dry before you do. Okay. So I've been using my thin brush for all of this. Now that I am done, I'm going to wash off my thin brush and go in with a medium sized brush. That sized brush um, is going to help me with this next step because we have a, a little bit larger. Uh, space to cover. If you've created your outline, that makes this space really easy to cover now because you won't have to worry about going to the edges um, with it. You can just avoid them um, um, because you have your outline. So we're just going to fill in this red shape just like we filled in that yellow shape. Now with the yellow shape, I use my thin little brush to fill in that yellow shape because it's, it's just easier to um, control the lines as you're spiraling out. Um, if you want to, you can use a medium-sized brush, but it's up to you. I like to use my, my small brush for that step. But for this step, I'm going to use my medium-sized brush. Got a little bit of red into my yellow. So I'm going to fix that a little bit. There we go. This is what this stuff looks like right now. If you have any questions, again, I suggest sending them in the group chat. Um, Thea is awaiting any questions that you need answered, um, or you can turn your microphone on at any time and ask me those questions yourself. So what I'm going to be doing next to fill in that red circle is I'm mixing, again, I'm using white, and I'm mixing white with red. And I definitely want it to look red and not pink, so I'm using a lot of red, but that under layer of white will create a stronger color. And then once it dries, if it looks a little bit of, little, little bit pink, you can go over that white-red mixture once it dries on the canvas with pure red, and it will make it look more red. Um, and I'll show you that step later. But right now, I've mixed a little bit of white. Um, actually, a lot of white in this case, because we're using a lot more red. Um, I'm mixing that white with red. So that's that mixture right here. Um, and, and in this seat. So between those lines, I'm taking my medium-sized brush. I'm keeping those brush strokes um, long and straight and 
and white and just uh, filling in the shape with a mixture of white and red. And if you're like, well, this, Sabrina, this is silly. My red looks like pink. Again, don't worry. Once it dries, and go over the pure red and it will actually show up red. But if you start with pure red, then the red will look like it can. So I'm filling this in with a mixture of white and red and um, and the brush strokes be very, very uh, it can be on the curve um, and very full. Um, I'm using to make sure I cover all of my uh, canvas inside this outline of a, of a C that we've got going on. If you're still working on outlining your C, don't worry. Um, we're just going to continue to move really slow to the painting. If you have any questions, drop them in the group chat. Or go and ask me some. So when I need to, I'm just mixing a little bit more red and white together. And I'm only going outline, um, and I'm keeping my brush stroke in the line in the routine. I am uh, almost done filling in a C. Um, if you are not where I am, don't worry. I am I am I'm a trained artist and I'm actually in training. So I'm learning new things all the time. And if you love to learn, but you need a little bit more time to, to learn those new uh, practices, don't feel bad about it. Just take your time um, because when you're doing art, it's more important to take your time uh work themselves out than it is to uh, uh hold anything. So I'm gonna take a little break. I have finished filling in my um with a little bit of white and red mixture. Sure I let dry um because it is a little white light um because we added that white I'm gonna let it dry and then I can come back with just um pure and cover it with um that pure red, red again to make it more strongly red. So while I'm waiting for it for, for it to dry, um, I am going to tell you guys a little bit more about that. It'll take some time, maybe uh, uh, drink a little of your drink, snack on a bit of your snacks, um, get yourself some more napkins to help you keep your, your workspace clean. Um, as artists, we find uh, Thea and I that keeping your art space clean is very, very important. So I hope that uh, before you started painting, you laid down some sort of uh, something on whatever beautiful tables you have at home. Um, if you didn't uh, and you haven't dripped yet, feel free to uh, put something underneath, you know, save your floors, your tables, whatever. Um, we can put down some old uh, rags for us um, to help us keep our space clean. Um, and if you uh, are like us, you don't like to clean up a lot, something uh, that, you know, you can either throw in the washer or you can throw away, uh, will help clean up faster. Um, when I'm done painting, I will probably empty my uh, water water glasses and then I rinse them out two or three times um, because the less paint that ends up on the inside of them, the cleaner they are, the better, the longer I'll be able to use them. Um, if you're using paper cups, cups you've made your cleanup even faster that way. So um, we at the studio like to use reusable things. So a lot of our stuff is. Uh, stuff that we can wash out um, and repeat use. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat, as I said before. Um, if you are 
uh, had trouble with your outline um, and you're really frustrated with it, um, which does happen, art is, doesn't always go smoothly, I suggest waiting for it to dry and then using just pure white, um, probably on your large brush because you probably haven't used your large brush yet. Um, and just going over white, and then you can start over. Um, and I like to, once that white has dried over whatever you put down earlier, you can go over with just a pencil and outline it, if that helps you get the shape more um, to your liking. The next step that we're going to do, which is our last step, is we are going to put in the city skyline. So we have our top stripe of blue, um, we have our white uh, stripes, which is our mountains, and at the bottom here, once we finish um, painting our uh, sea, our, uh, the bottom here is going to be our city skyline. Now, Denver has a, a, a skyline that is pretty normal as most cities, but we have a few really fun, interesting buildings that we as thinking like to put the shapes of. Um, specifically the cash register building, with which if you live in Denver, you probably would recognize driving by. So the cash register building, um, as you can see on this uh, um, reference here, or on the reference that is on Sipping and Painting Hampton's uh, image on your screen, uh, that reference photo of the painting will show the cash register building right here. Um, and maybe a few other familiar shapes that might help, that you might want to include in your city skyline. If you're having trouble with that idea of doing this next step, I would suggest uh, pulling up a reference photo to help you. If you just Google Denver uh, City of you know City in Colorado, you'll find you can look up silhouette of city skyline, something along those lines, and those uh, search terms might help you find a reference photo. How are we doing on time? Has everyone been able to, to draw and fill in their, their Colorado seat? All right, I think I'm going to uh, see if my paint is dry. Now, again, if you are having trouble seeing if your paint is dry, you can look at it from one direction or another to see if it has a sheen. If it has a sheen, it's probably still wet, um, and you should give it a little bit more time. And mine looks like it has a sheen, um, but if you're not sure, you can always feel free to take your painting um, and wipe it on a neighbor. And if they scream and run away from you, you either have coronavirus or uh, your painting is still wet. Now, um, if you're like me and you use that white and red mixture of um, to make your to fill in your C, your your C might look a little bit light. And if it looks a little bit light and not to your liking, that's okay. Feel free to do what I'm going to do next, which is uh, take that medium-sized brush I was using earlier um, and go over that light um, that white and red mixture, that light red pinkish color for red. As you can see on my palette, I'm just taking pure red. I'm not using any um, uh, white in my red right now. I'm just using that pure red. And because I have already laid down the groundwork of that pink color, when I use the pure red, it will make it look very, very red um, as I put it over. So you can kind of see, um, I started with a pretty dark color, so uh, it probably won't give it too much of a change. Here's was really light, if you put a lot of white into your head, um, then this will help you make your seed look more like the uh, primary red that is on the Colorado flag. So I'm just going over that seed again. Now, if you're interested in joining us for um, outside classes, at the studio um, or uh, open air, uh, open door classes at the studio as we are opening up this month of July. Feel free to uh, check out our website, our schedule, and find some more information there as we um, start to uh, consider what we're going to do as, as Colorado starts opening up in July. We'd love to see your faces in the studio. 
um, and everyone, uh, and we will be taking the greatest uh, safety precautions um, to make sure that everything goes smoothly and that you feel safe um, when you're painting with us. Uh, some of us, some of your instructors, uh, he and I, especially, we will be continuing these Zoom classes um, as long as there are still attendees. So if you are enjoying these and this makes you feel safe um, it, to be painting in the safety and comfort of your own home, then I hope you'll continue to join us every uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I think, is that it? We might be adding a couple. So we might be adding a couple. Um, I think they'll also probably be moving to uh, 7 p.m. Um, so if that changes, maybe make sure when you sign up that you uh, check that time change. Um, um, and then you can join us for Zoom classes again um, throughout the month of July. Um, so I'm, I'm still going over my uh, sort of light pink, um, my, my pink and my, my white and, and red mixture here. Um, with pure red to make it look really bright red, make it pop. Um, again, make sure you're careful not to go over the edges of your C. Just go straight up to them. You're filling in just like you did with, with a coloring sheet. And I'm keeping those brush strokes long and straight and even um, and just pulling them um, all the way up through the shape of the C. Alrighty, I hope that your uh, C is looking really good. Um, if you are you're done with this step and ready to move on to the next one, um, you'll be excited to know that that is exactly what my plan is. Um, and uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is using our small brush to create an outline of the city's capital. So, or the, the state's capital. Um, so I'm taking my medium-sized brush and I'm going to wash it off in water. And and once my brush is washed off, I'm going to switch brushes to my small brush, uh, which I used earlier, making sure that's also washed off. And I'm going to use that pure blue, um, just get it on the tip of my brush, my small brush. Uh, and I'm going to be using this to uh, do an outline of our city skyline. Which, as I said before, you can look up in reference photos online, or you can use reference photo here up to the side of my painting, or on one of the other um, uh, Zoom squares on your on your device. So I'm using that pure blue, and as you remember, I marked um, on I think these marks that represent the bottom of the painting, and I'm going to try and stay between those lines. Um, so so as I um, am going to be doing the, the outline of my city skyline, I'm making too far below or too far above this line so that you get a kind of even line. But keeping in mind that this is varied in shape um, and size. Um, so I hope you're all pretty close with me in time. Um, how, I'm not sure how many we have uh, with us tonight, so if you're in a different place, uh, don't worry. Um, there will be time to catch up. All right. So the nice thing about this uh, city skyline is that most of the city is a uh, rectangular um, and square building. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to start with those rectangular skyline buildings. Um, so simple um, can go wherever you want, um, or you can follow this directly. Which really, um, so I'm going to look at this, this reference that I have, 
and I'm going to see where I have um, just flat shapes that I can just do easily when as I start this outline. Um, and then stranger shapes like the uh, um, uh, what is it called? Yeah, like that's really those stranger shapes that aren't exact squares or rectangles. Those strange shapes, I'm going to give myself a little bit more time to come back and do once I've done my uh, rectangular buildings to just fill up the city skyline with uh, you know, city shapes. Um, all right, I'm going to get started. If you are behind, don't worry. Um, take your time to catch up. Um, I'm going to move forward because uh, this class uh, it does end a little bit soon, so I'm going to I'm going to move forward. Um, if you need time to catch up, don't worry. At the end of tonight, we will leave the painting up for a few extra minutes and let you take some time on your own to uh, uh, fix any mistakes or take uh, take your time and, and do anything later that you want to. So I put down uh, two marks on the edge of my painting, showing me from my painting, showing me where the uh, uh, one third at the bottom is, and then and so I'm going to start um, at the side closest to me. Um, I'm going to start there, and I'm trying to keep my uh, line as straight as possible because these are man-made objects as opposed to our uh, our mountain. Um, which was next one could go wherever you want to. So I'm trying to keep these lines as straight as possible. So I've gone yeah, about an inch in. I'm going to pull this, this line up a few, maybe a, a fourth of an inch up and over. Again, keeping these uh, lines as straight as possible. If you don't want to do this outline paint kind of you'll be going with a pencil and do it that way you want to be really exact about it um a pencil will work too um just keep your uh keep your hand really light and it will help you uh paint over it later so i'm going to i've created a straight line here i'm going to pull this line up uh straight um it's up to you how far um into the white you want to so right now I'm above that one um, as I do this line um, because this is a, our first weird building. And so right now I'm not going to detail this weird building. I'm just going to make a rectangle with it. So I've made my, my straight line up. I like this height, so I'm going to do a straight line across. Um, this is uh, like a half an inch, a little more than a half an inch is what I'm doing. Um, if your building sizes are a little bit different, don't worry. Um, it's just your painting and not mine. And uh, I really hope that your painting is a little bit different than mine because that makes things a little bit more fun. Um, so I've made this rectangle again, trying to keep my brush stroke as straight as possible because these are man-made buildings. is going to actually get pulled down farther as you can see on my left and this line that I did here. So this straight line and this one are parallel, but this line that I'm doing right now goes down a little bit farther. So I, and then I'm going to do a little straight line at the bottom going horizontally um, um, to get my location. I'm going to go up just a little bit. See a bonus line here. If you need to go back and fix things at any time, um, feel free to do that. Um, like I said, taking your time just uh, makes it a lot more pleasant. It makes it, it uh, will help you um, to get the shapes that you really, really want. So um, I, now I've created a little tiny building. Um, I kind of gave this roof an angle that's purple choice. If you want to do it perfectly straight, go ahead and do that. Um, so. Uh, and then I'm taking the line down again, just making a little building. I'm going to pull this line over a little higher than this line I had earlier. Um, and I'm just copying the exactly in terms of the skyline because I have it right here in front of me. If I know. Um, and I'm, I'm using just that, ooh, that pure blue um, to outline with. So uh, I give myself 
two fourths of an inch, maybe. Um, and I'm going to pull my color from there. So I'm pulling up into a rectangle again here. Not quite as tall as this one. Uh, it was about, about halfway into that that first rectangle of the vertical building that we did. And again, I'm trying to keep these edges as straight as possible so that it looks like man-made building, those corners as sharp as possible, which is I'm using my uh, small brush. And then I just pulled that line over horizontally. After I get more paint on my brush, I make sure to spin it on my palette um, like this. And by spinning it on my palette, I create a point to my brush that is helping me with this line, keep this line as straight as possible. Um, and I'm using a really light touch so that I have control over where my paint is landing. Um, and I'm going to pull this line up. Um, and I'm honestly just going to leave it floating because this is the cash register building and I'm not ready to do that quite yet. So there we go. There's the start of our cash register building. Um, and I'm going to give it space to go over like an maybe an inch. Um, to stop there. This is going to help me. Um, and I'm just going to make a sort of rectangle and then I'll come back later um, and put in the rest of what the cash register building actually looks like. If you want to go for the cash register building right now, go for it. Um, this is your painting and if that's what's going to work for you, do that. Um, but there we go. I've created a rectangle that I will add in detail as my cash register building, which is a, um, a more symbolic on our study skyline. Um, with some silhouette. So then I'll, I'll do it later. I'm going to pull that line down a little bit below this line here. I'm going to pull that line a little bit below that. I'm going to go horizontally again, give myself space. I'm going to pull that line up again after I've, I've given myself that space again. Trying to use just the edge of the brush to create really straight lines. If you're finding that your hands are dirty um, and are becoming problematic, um, so you don't create spots on your white, um, feel free to wash your hands, wipe them off, take a break, and uh, clean things up a little bit, make things easier for you. Going in with that blue again. Um, I'm going to take that horizontally over and create a little building. And then I'm going to go up a bit. I left maybe a fourth of an inch before I went up again, and I'm only going up like two fourths of an inch here. I'm going over again, um, maybe like half an inch here for this building. It's up to you. These buildings aren't um, aren't as important because the shapes are not as recognizable. So if it doesn't look quite right, that's okay because who knows if it looks right. The cash register building is probably the only one I'm really worried about getting right. And we're not doing it quite yet, just so that I can devote all of my attention to this. Um, so there you go, we've got another rectangular building. I'm going to go down and I'm going to pull, um, I, I would pull that line down a little bit more uh, just because I like the shape. Now, be aware, as I continue along doing the city skyline, I'm going to go over my red sea. That is okay. That is how it is supposed to be. Don't worry about it. Um, it might be a little difficult for you. I know it is for me to go over something that's so beautiful when I did the first time. Um, but it just, it has to be done. That's just how the painting works. But if you're painting, so if you really, really, really like your scene, it's perfect, don't worry about it. If you're like me and you made a few mistakes at the bottom of your seat, this is the perfect time to cover them up. So I'm going to be taking this outline. I'm, I took it down and I'm going to do a V shape for this next building. So it's just a slight slope. Um, and now I'm getting over to my uh, my C where I'm going to go over it. Oh, four points. So scary. I'm um, taking this tiny little thin little brush, making sure I roll it on my palette um, to get a thin edge on my thin skinny brush. 
Um, and I'm going to pull this line down a little bit more um, and give it an edge. So there we go. We got that, got that building. Uh, give it a little bit of a uh, edge and pull that line down. Again, this is this is a little harder um, for a corner, so I'm going to um, make sure that it's got a sharp corner and that the line goes straight down. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to pull over like two uh, half inch over, just create some space there this, with this building. Um, again, if your city skyline doesn't look like this, that is a okay. Um, we just we did a generalization of what our city skyline is, and we're gonna just play with it from there. So if yours looks really different, then that's okay. You're painting. Um, now I'm gonna do this next building's a little tricky. Um, I'm going to pull that line up and go over and then go down and then I'm going to come back and do a little rectangle on top of that um, in the center. So I'm going to go up and and over and down um, and create that little rectangle on top of a bigger rectangle for my next building. Again, try to keep those lines as straight um, horizontally and vertically as possible and keeping those corners. Um, as sharp as possible. If, they, if they're a little rounded though, don't worry. Um, it's just an aesthetic. Um, so now we've got we've got our, our little rectangle on top of a rectangle. Um, and and I'm, um, for this building, I'm going to leave that next part. I'm going to leave the, the last part of that building undone for now, like the cash register building, since that one's a little bit more interesting. I'm going to come back and do it later. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to pull that this line, this edge straight down. Um, and it's okay if yours is going up and down. I mean, that's the point of this, but if it looks like, you know, it's, it's going in a, a semicircle, that's fine. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, I'm going to give myself a little, you know, alleyway here. And then I'm going to pull up just a regular little rectangle here. Again, trying to keep my lines as straight as possible. And I pull this line across horizontally, connect it to my vertical line, trying to keep that corner um, like a corner. Now, as you're going over your red, your dark blue is going to turn into more black. That's how it is. Um, as we go back later, you can try and add some white if you want to, but right now it's just an outline, so don't worry about it. So I've created this um, building. And then I'm going to do my next building, which has a little bit of a uh, has a, a v-shaped roof again or maybe uh, maybe this is your capital and you can do your capital more capital shapes up to you i'm going to do mine a little bit more capital shape so i'm going to make a sort of u with my brush um if you don't want to try that don't worry uh if this is your skyline so you can do it a little differently but i'm gonna i'm just going to do a little bit of a u with it because that is um the capital is one of my favorite buildings in the city it's really pretty um so there you go a uh, place of great change, right? Um, I hope our city is, is able to make our capital a really beautiful part of it as it continues. Um, so I'm gonna and I'm gonna make a little alleyway there, um, pulling those lines together. And I'm just keeping this line connected all the way through because when I go back with our next step and fill in this space, it'll be really easy if the whole line is connected and I don't have to worry about spaces I don't know about. So I'm gonna and I'm gonna create this alley here. Um, it's up to you. I want to make those alleys a little bit different height. Um, so I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I found that my buildings are a little bit farther this way um, than the sample. So I'm going to give myself an extra building. If you are like me um, and yours look a little different than mine does or the reference does, don't worry about it. Um, you can add another.
I hope it didn't scare you, gave you a little bit of time to catch up. Um, my battery power went down a little bit, so I had to fix that. Um, I hope you're all still with me. Um, I'm taking a little bit more time than I would normally take so that you guys feel comfortable because this is a little difficult. Um, but I'm just going to finish the city skyline, pulling that line down. Um, and I'm going to go up and create a, a taller building over here, just like the sample does. So this goes straight up. Um, and since I created a pointed building down here, I'm just going to make this a regular rectangle. It's up to you how you want to do it. So I'm varying my skyline a little bit. So if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, uh, feel free to do whatever makes you happy. Um, just try and keep those lines as straight as possible um, so it looks as uh, man-made um, as it's uh, been. I'm creating a little building off to the side here. And make that a straight line. And I'm going to create a taller building here to cover a mistake that I made. Um, so if you're like me and you made a little mistake and you need your city skyline to cover that, feel free to try that. I'm getting kind of creative with my building shape. Um, but I'm going to finish it off with just a straight building, a flat building, and work my way up to the dot that I placed on this edge here um, for my last part of my silhouette of my city. So there we go. We got our full third, uh, bottom third of our painting um, outlined. And now we're ready to fill it in. And that is our last step. So I hope that you've caught up to me if you were having trouble earlier. Um, if you're not, don't worry. Uh, you'll be able to find this video on YouTube in around 24 hours. Um, and our YouTube link should be somewhere in the chat. So if you want to go and copy that down now before the meeting ends, uh, feel free to do that. Or you'll find it at the bottom of our website. Um, and you can always go back and follow along with the same video uh, once I'm done with it tonight. Um, so I'm going to, now that I have I uh, finished my outline. I just took my small brush, did a little bit of, um, pulled the, the paint from that line with that dark blue just directly down from that, that outline that I did so that as I fill in this next part, um, I won't have to worry about getting really close to that line with my uh, big thick brush. So you can use your little thin brush on that blue to uh, go through and pull the color down. I'm being very careful. Not to ensure that you spend as much time making a uh, wonderful If you're like me, uh, buildings unfinished, you can go back um, and add those little bits of detail, like that this fire here that I, I missed earlier, and this fire here that I didn't do earlier. I'm going to go back and do those right um, and uh, uh, And the key I did over here. Um, I'm going to do that building, pull that line up. Um, I'm going to pull it, I'm going to go straight up here and I'm going to make the directions here. So as I'm, um, finishing this skyline, wherever you are with your painting, are in training tonight, um, and I, unfortunately, we can't see you right now, but um, I hope that you have had fun doing it. And I, mean, I just want to know again that uh, your instructor, like, um, my name is Sabrina, and my friend must be art, or one of the other um, boxes on your, on your Zoom screen. We are, I'm working for free tonight, so feel free to drop me a tip if you uh, 
uh, are enjoying your instruction tonight. Um, and I greatly appreciate you uh, following along with me. If you are like me and you can finish the teacher building, take the time to do that now before you start uh, filling in your blue space. And if you're starting filling in your blue space, then uh, we're just using that pure blue and then some pure blue mixed with black to create the, the correct colors. So um, I have gone through and pulled some of that color down directly from my lines, make it easier on this next step as I go through with uh, with my blue and fill in this, this part of my painting um, so that I don't have to go all the way to that edge. Um, so I'm done with my, my thin brush and I'm going to go in with a medium or if you who are impatient to large brush. Um, I find the medium brush gives me a little bit more control. Um, so I'm going to take that large, or that medium brush and a little bit blue and, and maybe some black. And I'm just going to take those lines straight across my canvas, um, avoiding any of the city skyline um, that I've created and just fill in this space. It might take a little bit of water or a little bit more paint for you to fill in this space really easily. Um, so do what you need to do to create that. Again, I'm just using pure blue and a little bit of black. I'm just filling in this blue with my medium-sized brush, taking those those paint strokes directly straight across my canvas. Um, and as I'm getting into these buildings, I'm just filling them in with uh, thin little blue strokes. I make my black more at the bottom of my bottom edge of my painting, um, and then the lighter blue closer to this edge. That, you did. Um, that just creates a nice gradient. But if you don't want to do that, that's okay. I'm just filling in space with this blue, um, and this is my last step. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I can sign my painting, and I'll be good with it. I can hang on my wall when it's dry, and I can go wash my brushes and wash out my water jars and, and clean up, and then and eat the rest of my snacks. Those are the fun parts, the eating the rest of the snack part. Here, if you have it, it's getting really dark and you want to add some white, like me, you can add some white to your blue. Um, you just need a really little bit, but then you can use that and go over your blues here. Um, work them into your darker blues to the side and just pull them up into those uh, out of your feet. They'll give you a little bit more color um, where it becomes black. That's a really simple fix uh, to do. If you don't like that, then don't worry about it. Um, just go with your regular blue and the color. I'm just using really long horizontal strokes across my canvas, filling in that city skyline. And I'm making sure to connect my blue um, with the blue on the edge of my canvas, making sure to cover those edges so that I don't have to frame it when I'm done and it looks like a really finished, beautiful Here's are all gorgeous and I'd love to see them. Um, so why don't we all hold up 
our finished paintings when you're uh, getting close to done with them. Even if you're not finished, um, I would love to see them and we can take a picture um, and we can send you all those Zoom pictures you can take from as you're going out the door. I'd love for you to turn on your cameras, uh, turn on your cameras and we can see what you've been working on throughout class. So I'm going to put my brush in the water. I'm going to call it good on this. Um, I'm going to, for me, I'm going to take a, my thin brush, sign it, and I'll hold it up to show you all what I've been doing tonight. So here is my Oh, look at that. Alrighty, here we go. Oh. Anybody else want to show? If you want to put up your 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 see your painting, and we can take a picture together. Hey, look at this! This is some amazing painting. I'm so glad you guys have done so. Are we ready to take a picture with you? Yeah. You ready? All right. All right. Then, and that concludes our our class for today. So um, I welcome you to take the time you need. We're going to leave uh, the Zoom up for just a little bit longer. Um, and, uh, and you can uh, take some time to finish up your painting however you would like. Um, and I think Dia has put my picture information in the chat. Uh, so you can look that as you're going out. Uh, thank you again for joining us in Sipping and Painting Hampton. Um, we are so excited that you took the time to paint with us. Thank you for uh, being patient with me. <laughs>